the episode of the Labiotech Hangouts. So this month we have the CEO of S Biomedic here. So hi, Veronica. Hi, hi, everyone. <laughs> so um, S Biomedic is a, is a microbiome startup based in, in Leuven in, in Belgium um, and is developing a life therapeutic against skin disease include in a lead program in, in acne. And so the startup was originally started in 2014 and recently closed the Series A just a few months ago. And interesting fact is that one of the biggest cosmetic companies, so Biostorff, the German cosmetic, joined as an investor. Um, and so I guess my, my first question is, you, you joined the company a bit later on. So can you tell me a bit why and tell me more about the, the story of the, of the company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. No, it was uh, it was uh, actually I already joined 2014, so almost at the beginning. Um, and um, at that time, I was I was living in Barcelona. I had uh, my job in uh, in market research uh, in in Barcelona. Uh, and uh, my my co-founder Bernie at that time he was finishing his PhD and came up with uh, with the great idea of of the skin microbiome modulation. And uh, at that time, he had his colleague uh, Mark on board, and uh, they basically have put down uh, various uh, variations of the of the whole uh, skin microbiome modulation idea. And uh, it just they were so so excited about the whole story, and uh, and it sounded so so cool and uh, so uh, promising. And I said, okay, cool, let's uh, let's give up my job, <laughs> <laughs> let's leave Barcelona. <laughs> And let's uh, let's jump into this crazy business. So um, yeah, I, I I joined almost at the beginning, uh, 2014, and I helped them basically uh, put uh, not only the scientific part but put the business part uh, to it as well. Put it on the paper, and uh, we applied uh, with uh, with that business idea or business plan uh, to start up Chile. So we then uh, all went, or or uh, most of the team went to Chile, where we then started the whole endeavor. That's cool. And so in between Chile and the Series A, what were the, the major <laughs> steps? Yeah, so um, Chile basically gave us the opportunity to generate the first data. Uh, we were there part of the Generation 11 program uh, for seven months, I think. Um, so yeah, we could we could generate the first proof of concept data, basically show that we can uh, modulate the, the microbiome, uh, that we can select the strains we want to. We have filed the first IP. And from there, we because we are all Europeans, uh, Mark comes from Spain, Bernie comes from Germany, I myself, I'm Czech. Um, and we, we thought, okay, uh, this, is, this is not a short-term project. This project will take uh, quite some time and we want to be back to Europe. That's the, that's the markets we understand and that's the place where that's where we have a network and everything. So we decided to go back to Europe and there we were extremely lucky to uh, be able to uh, collaborate with our mentors in Germany in the University of Magdeburg. Yeah. And through there, we have basically got the next funding, which was a uh, which was a European funding. And so we could continue with the research there at the University Clinic uh, in Magdeburg at the dermatology unit, uh, basically having access to patients and and uh, being able to to generate the first clinical data. And from there, uh, on the way, we met we met uh, with Johnson and Johnson Innovation. Uh, which was uh, basically, which is a very, um, the Johnson & Johnson Innovation, they're very strong in their uh, incubating models and uh, attracting uh, external innovation. And uh, we met at the time when uh, the incubator of JLabs, or uh, at that time it was called JLinks, was being opened here in Belgium. And uh, for us again, uh, lucky moment uh, as uh, the labs that, uh, that are available here and the equipment that we have at hand uh, was just perfectly fitting for the needs that we have. Uh, that basically, uh, after the first in vitro uh, validation, then the clinical validation, now we have to work mostly on the product development. Yep. And with the equipment we have available here in, in JLabs, it's it's just uh, everything we need to, to really accelerate to the to the first product. That's a really cool, really cool story. And, and we, I like the, the very European slash global part. Thank you. I repeat that quite often that biotech is global from day one, and I think you're a really good example of that. So it's it is, it is, and, and <laughs> at the end, you you work with people from all around the world. I mean, we have uh, basically also our investors come from all uh, all around Europe, uh, maybe at some point even all around the world, 
And if you if you want to do high tech uh, science and, and cutting edge, I mean, it's there is no borders. You yeah. don't need to look all around the world. I mean, we have competition in Japan. We have uh, we there is projects going on in China, US, of course. So no, that's, that's great. And I guess you answered one of my questions, which was why why were you based in, in Belgium if you didn't start here? I, I will get back to that <laughs> a bit later on. Yeah, there is actually more reason. So Belgium themselves, they, they have very strong ecosystem in startups and, and biotech. And also, if you look at the concentration of microbiome projects, uh, especially the Ghent area is really, really strong on, on both academic level and uh, startup level. So okay. I, th I thought France was, was better in microbiome. Um, yeah, you could argue. I mean, each country <laughs> says that they have their own spot, but uh, France, true. I mean, France is very strong in cosmetics. Yeah. But again, the location in Belgium, I mean, we, we jump on a train and in one, two hours, we are in France. So a connection, especially to Paris, is uh, extremely convenient. I, I would not make the joke that half of Belgium is almost France. But, uh... <laughs> ah, OK. <laughs> I will not, Sorry, I, I missed I that one. I haven't made that joke. Uh, <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, and I guess, I mean, recently Belgium was really successful in biotech with Ablings, with Agenix, with many, many companies who were super successful. So I guess um, it drives a lot of investment and drives a lot of just the whole ecosystem. So indeed, makes, makes indeed, total sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially the ecosystem, you see it because, for example, we started at the beginning, we started to work with our IP lawyer in the States because that yeah. was the most experience in the microbiome field. But we are able to find the very experienced IP lawyers even here in Belgium. And that, that gives us a lot of a uh, lot of advantage then, of course. No, that's great. Um, and so to get back to the, the, the recent fundraising, can you expand a bit more on, on how much? How much you raised and yeah, just, just how much you raised and, and why you chose those investors? Yeah, so uh, we have uh, engaged basically since a few months, we have engaged uh, with uh, our existing investors and also new investors. Uh, in this round, basically, uh, our participating Bayersdorf, uh, Johnson & Johnson, Investira and CG Health Ventures. And um, yeah, the, the idea uh, is, or our Series A, basically the intention is to bring us really to a clinically validated first product that should be launched into the market. And they're actually, Biosdorf plays quite a significant role because uh, they are also uh, partially now involved in the development. So they basically support us uh, in, the, in the production and uh, establishing the first, first uh, product that should then be launched in the market uh basically once uh once we're done with this yeah. uh this program <laughs> and so the amount you raised is it public um i think we made it public we are actually still in the process of fundraising so we closed the first uh we closed the first part uh we are still uh open to to close in the next weeks uh and we are in total we are looking at the amount of four million okay so if some VCs are, are watching us, yeah, they can contact you. That's great. But um, it should be fast. We we, we have <laughs> last bits open and and in really uh, intense to close in the next week. So if anyone is interested, please be fast. <laughs> first come, first serve. It sounds good. Yeah. Um. And and how is it to like, how is it to have strategic investors so early on? Um, that's a very good question. <laughs> so I think you will have many different stories from many different projects. Um, I find it, uh, so until now we have very, very good experience, I would say. So uh, I have to say that uh, we, we started to work first uh, within the J-Labs, basically getting support through Johnson & Johnson, even though uh, they, uh, they have very established model how to work with startups and everything is very well structured and everything is very well uh, done and very well approached. So I have to say there, it's it's extremely professional, while some other big companies are still learning, maybe, I would say. And it's from that point of view... All the other big pharma, and not knowing really what they're doing. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I think in that sense, we were lucky that we basically entered into a system that is well, well established and that uh, there's yeah. so many uh, external startups collaborating with J&J &J, uh, that uh, they're... Um, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a well-maintained machine, I would say. And then uh, with the addition of Biosdorf, I think it's, uh, it's uh, we, we, we sometimes make the joke that it's better to have two corporates than one. 
on. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's again a different point of view because with Barzo we, we uh, are much stronger also on the technical development. And uh, there I have to say so far, I mean, we are at the beginning of the whole uh, and of the whole collaboration. Uh, but so far, I, we are learning a lot. We are learning a lot and I, I really enjoy the way to working with their R&D teams and, and the way how they how they support basically uh, how they work with us shoulder to shoulder. So, so far, all good. We will see. Yeah. Uh, how how it continues and where we stand in two years and 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 after that. But uh, so far, um, I think it can be it can be if you if you manage it well and if you know what you want and how far you can go uh, from your st startup point of view, it's uh, it's beneficial. No, that's good. That makes makes total sense. And I guess you will see in the next two years if you have tough times if they're really good partners or not. Uh, that's exactly, exactly. <laughs> it will it will prove itself. But again, I think uh, especially J&J is very experienced in, yeah. in uh, having and managing external innovation. And then, uh, yeah, you just have to be true partner. I mean, you yeah. have to be in uh, not to put yourself in a position that you're a small startup even though you are partially, but you, you just have to really establish true partnership. I That's think. good. Uh, I definitely agree with, with Jenji. I mean, we are partner of the Startup Slam at by Europe in Copenhagen, and we've been partner last year as well, and actually they're, they're, they're really doing good jobs. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and I think it's well. this this type of partnerships are, are uh, you know, beneficial for both parties because at the same time they're, they are learning from us and they are learning uh different ways of of innovation and uh different ways of thinking and they themselves basically um uh, i would say educate in the way how you can do things differently that's great um so let's let's switch a bit more to, to a technical technical side so uh and technical slash clinical side so your lead product is in acne that's correct yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, and so can you just expand a bit uh, why acne and where you are standing right now in terms of of yeah. proof development? Yeah. So uh, why acne? Uh, that's uh, based on the scientific, uh, rational, and scientific evidence that basically is available. Uh, it's within the skin microbiome field. Acne is one of the diseases that is the most studied. So we have the most understanding what is basically the interaction between the bacteria and the host. Mm -hmm. And this is crucial for us in S-Biomedic. I mean, we don't, uh, we don't just choose whichever strains and, and mix them and put them on the skin. We really need to soundly, scientifically understand what is happening, why are the bacteria there, what is their role, and how are they influencing the skin cells. Okay. And for that, and, and I guess most... acne is, it's really good to go in a disease where it's really well understood because yeah. microbiome is not that well understood yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, indeed. I mean, still, there is still open questions around acne, but from the, all the other diseases, so if you look at atopic dermatitis, rosacea, psoriasis, acne is one of the best, well, or best described in terms of connection between the bacteria and the, and the disease. So that was for us the easiest to start, and we, we could develop really uh, the biomarkers, how we select the bacteria and, and prove uh, and build quite strong evidence on how, how um, the influence is there between the bugs and the disease. And that's why it's also our first and main program. But of course, we, we learned a lot uh, on the way of the development. And right now we are, we are getting in a second asset, which will be then uh, around aging. So. Pretty cool. And so you mentioned next next step or with the financing round is to get clinical data. Um, can you can you expand a bit on that on how you will do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are right now focusing on the technical development of the product. So uh, basically making sure that the bacteria is stable, uh, that we uh, have a scale up production that is robust and that is uh, indeed scalable for for a global launch at some point. Uh, making the right formulation, the right packaging, uh, putting everything together, that it's all compatible, uh, that it's user-friendly, uh, that it's <laughs> cost-effective. Uh, so basically putting all these aspects together and then uh, such a prototype, uh, which should be really completed within the next uh, two years, uh, will be tested uh, in, uh, in vivo for, mm. for claims, for safety, for uh, looking at the effect. And then basically that prototype is, uh, let's say, uh, really close to market or market ready. That's great. And when we prepared the, that hangout, you told me you will go for consumer product versus 
clinically reimbursed product. Can you can you expand a bit on that and, and what's the reason and the, the reasoning behind it? Yeah. So uh, currently we are developing a consumer product. Uh, the reason is that uh, at the moment, regulatory wise, uh, we see a huge potential for for consumer microbiome based products. Uh, the reason is we can be so much faster to be uh, at the consumer. So if we want to really give a solution to our to our customers or to our, uh, I would not call them patients, but <laughs> to whoever uh, mm -hmm. wants to, to, to our users, exactly, to whoever needs, basically, to whoever needs yeah. help with the, with the skin problem at the, at the beginning with the acne. I mean, we can be so much faster at the, at the users. Uh, what do you mean by so much problem. faster? Can you give a, a range? Like, you know? So I mean, theoretically, in two years, if everything goes well, two, three years, we, we are able to, to deliver first solutions. Instead um, of five, six, of seven. Looking at maybe 10 years, five, okay. six, 10 years, going through clinical validation and so on. So the regulatory space is at the moment um, still unclear, I would say, but um, I hope that uh, the development in the field will go in the right direction and that the authorities will acknowledge that basically there is a really lot of still space uh, to put the microbiome based uh, products in the market as cosmetics. And so, and, and reimbursement wise, because that's a big, that's a big, uh, pro problem in the microbiome space, typically with, with fecal transplant, if issues with, with reimbursement afterwards, or some have been done without clinical studies, so in the reimbursement side, it's, it's tricky. So will you face the same issues as well? So right now, there is a really uh, big discussion going on be between FDA and EMA uh, and on the regulatory side, how all these products should be handled, what should be the regulatory pathways, what all do we have to prove if we wanna go for prescriptions, what should be the rules. So this is all that is right now ongoing discussion. And I think all everyone in the field is a little bit of uh, being an explorer and, and looking what is what is the right way. So and what's, I what's, don't the think trend? what's the trend or what's the like summary of the last discussions? We're trying to learn from from the past and find because you mentioned a, quite a quite a paradox because what is happening, for example, especially in the gut field, there is a products that have been in the market for many, many years. Mm. And uh, basically, people uh, people are using them for many many years. And now, if uh, a company wants to prove a certain efficacy and would like to make a probiotic or microbiome claims on these, uh, the FDA is right now pushing for going uh, for basically new drug uh, validation, which is indeed a paradox because you have a product uh, in the market and uh, you need to go through a process of a completely new ingredient or new. Uh, active uh, compound and I think that makes it difficult for for many of the companies in the field and, and I guess you have the same parallel was with cell therapy which in the 2000s just went on the market as a medical device or not even and then they were all kind of withdrawn or limited afterwards and now now you don't have any cell therapy or very few that don't have clinical validation or go through the clinical paths now yeah, 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 but I have to say, I, I mean, there were some discussions just few few weeks ago, I think, on the FDA level, and the FDA is open for discussion. So okay. I, I hope they will listen, and I hope that the field will find strong enough arguments to basically uh, make it make it as easy as possible, but at the same time as safe as possible. I think the safety is the the biggest point of the whole discussion. Yeah, and I guess Biasdorf believe as well that it can be a more B two C a consumer product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So indeed, I mean, all, all uh, everyone in the cosmetic field uh, believes that there is space, especially if you look at the function of the skin in the terms of uh, making it uh, basically rebalancing the healthy state, uh, making you look more uh, younger, more pretty, and or just keeping the healthy state of the skin. I think there is a lot of space for, for cosmetic products. That's good. And how do you, let's take a bit of, of pers we, have, we have two more minutes, let's take a bit of perspective. Like, how do you see, like, the, when, when you talk with other cosmetic partners, other than Biodorf or Biosdorf or just other stakeholders, how do you see their interest in, in the microbiome field? Are they just watching closely or are they already really intensely in discussion? They have already scientific teams. What's, what's the state right now? So there is a big, big hype in the industry around the whole skin microbiome and uh, everyone is looking for something that, uh, that would basically uh, follow somehow the line of the, of the microbiome. 
I think uh, where we, uh, many companies who are still lacking is really a solid scientific evidence. So what you will find is basically using uh, extract of, uh, plant extracts and claiming there is a certain effect on the microbiome. But at the end, until now, we have not seen much data that would, that would be solid enough to, to make a solid claims. Um, and, and just for that, would it make sense to make a real clinical trial to prove that data? Uh, yeah, but it's. This, I think the difficulty or the challenge is then really uh, then reading the microbiome. So you can you can take samples of the microbiome and read some changes on that side. But what does the change mean? Is it a positive development? Is it a negative development? I think. So you mean even the even the endpoints of the biomarkers would not be clearly defined. Yeah, yeah. So quite often in the microbiome field, the endpoints are are still uh, one of the open questions. But there is a lot of efforts. I mean, many research go a lot of research going on, uh, and uh, I think we will very very soon see uh, more and more different products in the market and and also science that is improving basically with every publication. That's great. And on um, question more on the microbiome field, not just for, for cosmetic microbiome, but overall, what's, what's your feeling on it compared to, I don't know, <laughs> compared to five years ago to two years ago, quite a lot have happened. What's, what's your feeling on it? Yeah, yeah it's booming. It's, it's incredibly booming. Uh, I think uh, we are, uh, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think 2004, there was like 600 publications. Uh, 2014, it was 6,000 publications on, on the topic of microbiome. So the boom is, is crazy. Um, I think in the next year, we will see a little bit more of consolidation within the field so that uh, the hype will go slowly over and we will understand better more connections. Um, so yeah, I think we are on the front of the wave, but um, yeah, expecting a little bit of consolidation in the next years and then hopefully seeing a first therapeutic applications and first products in the market as well in the next yeah. years. Should come soon. I mean, you have quite a lot of phase two, phase three, kind of ongoing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. I, I actually, you already. If have they don't, if they don't fail like the series, if they don't fail like series. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope <laughs> there's more positive. But there is, there is the first positive ones, and and we keep our fingers crossed that there is more. Cool. That's great. Uh, I think time is time is up. My my watch is is vibrating. Uh, so th thanks a lot for for joining and um, good luck for for the next milestones and yeah see you soon then. Thank you very much. It was Thank a pleasure. You. Have a good bye. day. Bye bye.